Just like every other trip this year, the rain is back. <laughs> Of course, this is what happens when I don't have my camera. I went back and got it. Found a really incredible isotelus. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. Today we have permission through the Paleontological Society to go to two creeks that are known for their trial bites. These are both going to be Ordovician, where we're going to hope to find some, oh, possibly some Triarthus and possibly, if we're really lucky, some Isotelis, which were common during this time period. It's going to be an actual beautiful area that we're in and we'll actually be going down to a creek. One problem, once again, we are expecting rain. <laughs> Just like it's been on the past couple of trips, we hope that it doesn't rain. But we'll just, once we're here, we have to go with what we get. So to get, if you do like these fossil hunting and collecting videos, or if you like fossil videos in general, please go ahead and give me a like, or hit the subscribe button down below. Subscribing doesn't cost anything, but what that does is makes these fossil type videos pop up more often on the YouTube feed. We all want to see more fossil videos, right? Well, so uh, here we go. We're about to go down to the creek. I hope you enjoy. Right, so That's right, you gotta put Max on here. Max, Max is the one who found it. Found it. <laughs> what do you think this is? It, it, you can't tell. It could be Isotelus, it could be a Triarthus. Not enough info. Yeah. It is a big one, that's for sure. Where is it? Oh. Oh, oh well, that, Jesus, you don't need the rocks off of that. Well, I see. Yeah. I. Did you bring the rocks off? Yeah, I, you know what? I did. And it sits in the car. And this is the site I bought it for. Ray, take this back to my car the whole time. Yeah. See what's on the other well, side. Well, somebody's <laughs> help, I could. But I would set it up like this. It is on the end. It works. Yeah. But you could set it up like this. You, you, because you brought one? Yeah, I bought one after our last trip when I picked up the gun. So I've never used it. Tap it on a thing. I mean, I don't mind giving it a go. I'll hold it if you want to. I like to get out of here. Yeah. Max, I'm gonna hold this. It is cracking. I can hear it. I can't see it cracking because I don't have my glasses on. Hey, Max, especially hold this side. Hold this side. I don't want that to fall. I'll tell you what, if I ruin it, you're gonna be happier. If you ruin it, then we'll get your eyes to close. That's right. That's what I was gonna say. If I ruin it. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a positive and not a negative. You guys. <laughs> 
two good things going on there. It's coming off, plus you have a, a whole plus thing splitting like open. New layer in there, right? Well, that's it. That's what I'm saying. You're going to find better stuff, maybe, Look, trying to get that off. Okay, now. Oh, that one. Yep, so much there. you're probably right. But you can split that one again, and you can split this one again. Right now, this is well, now you got that piece off. The thing you got to watch out for is the sharpness of the axe. What? The sharpness of the axe. The thing you got to watch out for is Ray with a hammer. Able to get out the trolley bike. So the first trolley bike of the day, really big one. Not sure what it is. Alright, so over here Mike has two chisels in this slab of rock. I'm gonna try a pry bar now. Of course we have no idea whether or not there's anything in it. Not at all. <laughs> it just looked like a one of the usual suspects. Ooh, look yeah. at that. Part of it. That's certainly enough surface area to have something. No one in that little piece, but... But the whole thing looks like it's going to come up. Yeah. the big piece. Gonna stick this under it again? Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Okay. Now I'm gonna have to split this down now. Yeah, so that, if you split it down and then see if there's anything good on the inside. Yeah then you'll know it's worth splitting the rest of it, but yeah. it's a void. Gotcha. All right, let's see what you got here, eh? It's okay, but I didn't find it. <laughs> Ooh, what is that? Is that a cryptolithus? It doesn't look like a... Not a cryptolithus. Isotelus. No. Yeah, that one... Oops, this is the guy that found it. it might be a small deplora. That's the other thing, I, but would deplores be here? Um... I, yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I initially yeah, think fake ops. A Dalmanides is a possibility too, I think, of this slurry. Dalmanides, yeah. that's Dalmanides. the one I was saying. You were at Dalmanides yesterday? Yeah, like around 7 in the morning? PM. No, oh, PM. Oh, we were yeah. already gone by then. Yeah, okay. No, we had to go back. Just, I was just swinging by. Can I, I put you in our vlog, our vlog too? Yeah, you had Oh, okay. Jim. Uh, Jim? Okay. Yeah. And this, this, this boy is from here. Yeah, Ooh, nice. Nice cephalopod. Yeah, that's a cephalopod. Yeah. And these are uh, tentaculitis. tentaculitis. Yes, a bunch of them. Tentaculitis. Okay. Yeah. Want to see a big plate of tentaculitis? No. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so the, so the ammonites? Of course you These are uh, tentaculites, raptolites. I think oh, that what that Chris. is. Chris. So right now we're looking at graptolites. Graptolites are kind of a mysterious creature. The entire phyla is extinct. And this is just a nice example. It's got some fairly big ones in here. So looks like I found an isotelus. This is what happens when you move big pieces and turn over a lot of surface area. The hope is more surface area, more likely to find something. So it's a section of an isotelus. Although getting it out is really difficult because it looks extremely cracked and fragile. But I will do the best I can. Once again, in this beautiful place. And the really nice fossil. <laughs> Let me wash it off a little bit. 
kind of cute, but you're going to have to go the right angle and you can't see it. It's almost like you can't see it too hot, too well. Oh, well, I can see it. Well, now I can't. Should I turn down a bit? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's a really nice big supper pod in there. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I was just getting ready to throw it. <laughs> and you looked down and said, oh, that Wait a looks minute. like something. So Mike has a giant cephalopod. Yo, oh, that's definitely a giant cephalopod. You can see the different sutures now. Okay. So Mike, huh. that is an awesome find. Did you throw the other half away? <laughs> uh, no, well, there was no other half. There was no other half. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably go see if the other half is there. Because that looks like a Yeah, I have one. to go f swimming to find the other half. Hey well, yes. This is. Is it alright if I put you in our blog? Sure. Oh, thank you. Hi. Hi. Tell everybody your name. Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. From Long Island. And let's see. Right there. Right where your thumb is. Oh, yep. Oh, that looks like. I think that's a hand of a trolley bike. Yeah. Are yes. you sure? It yeah. looks like a wing. Well, it could be a side. <laughs> There's, there's, we don't yeah. think, there's no flying trolley bites, as far as we know. <laughs> See, and this is probably a cephalopod. This whole big wow, stupid look rock. at that. That's that. That's uh. Nice. That's enormous. That is a really good one. Yeah, Ray and I looked at it and said, "Go find somebody above our pay grade." You know. <laughs> I'm thinking, wood. I don't think so. No, that's a, that. It, you can see you can see the different growth rings. That that yeah. is uh, that is definitely seventh spot. Yeah, he'd be somebody to mess with. You know? I'll smile with my with my. Well, he thought it was the the pagidium of something. Yes, it is the pagidium, or it is basically what the uh, hind shell of something called an isotelus. Iso what? Isotelus. Telix. Telus. Helix. Telus, almost, or you could say telus too. Isotelus. Oh, telus. Isotelus. Yes. Okay. Iso means the okay. same, and I'm oh. not sure what telus means. Well, I don't know either, but, but I'll here's look it the. Up. Uh, isotelus. How did you know that? How can you just look at that and say isotelus? These are fairly distinctive as far as trilobite uh, because shapes go. For, okay. Its size and it, it's. It's big, isn't it? It's big, it's big and it's. Uh, it's fairly featureless. As far as, uh, <laughs> okay. See how it's very, very, very flat? Yeah. They're very large and, very, and fairly featureless. In fact, their front ends and rear ends look very similar. Really? It's hard to tell which way they're going. Oh. <laughs> do, they, what, where are their, do they have that eye feature on the front end? There? Yes, there should yeah. be an eye feature on them. In fact, you know, I, I see a little bump there. I wonder if this is actually the front or the back. <laughs> well, Some, I'll take it front or back. <laughs> Isotelus. Oh. Isotelus. Okay. They are. So, um, hope Andy's watching me and he sees me. This friend that just died from the Rock Club. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and the, the, his memorial service is today, but this is my my memorial to him. <laughs> well, hey, thank you, uh, Penny. Well, thank you. So now I found my cephalopod. Found a cephalopod. This one is pyrotized, which gives it that golden color, which is really, really beautiful. Also has a lot of reptilites with it as well. <laughs> Very nice supper bag. Just like every other trip this year, the rain is back. <laughs> Let it rain. Six or seven inch or so of course I didn't have my camera when I did that. Hold on to the branch over there. Oh, it's coming right here. Yeah. So you can actually see it from here. I turned over that rock. Can you imagine what it's that's a long step. Yes. Hey guys, it feels. That's only the negative. No, the entire head is under there. The pagidium, part of it's right there and the rest of it's here. Ah. And then 
have all of these on chlorides, and it looks like I can see like one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six of them clearly. And, oh, you know what this is here? What, what, what is the name for the... The piece, um, the piece underneath? Yeah, the stop, the something style. I know what you mean, it's that part right that goes... Yeah. It's right there, it looks like a wishbone. Like a, yes. It's right there. It's unbelievable. Yes. It is a fabulous, fabulous. That's the head of another oh, one. That is a piece. I don't know what that piece is. It must have had broke. That looks like the eye. An eye right there. Oh, wow. That's pretty fragile. Yeah, don't the touch nose. it. That's, that's pretty fragile. Yeah, you, this is awesome. It, unfortunately, the pedilum is broken. Right? You've got a piece of it there. And then he's going to have to dig that out. Because he's got the rest of it. And some of it might be buried. Yep. But that is gorgeous. All the uh, chlorides are sort of on their side. Yeah. But I'm sure somebody who, who knows how to prepare could, could put that together. Oh, really bring it out. Yes. Yeah. Really bring out a lot of things. I can't, what is it? It's a hypostyle, right? Is that what it's called? I forgot the name, but I know. But I you know, know how underneath you've got the, and then you've got the mouth part. The mouth yes. part is, is exposed. It's separate, but it's exposed. That's yes. It, it, it's, it is absolutely awesome. This is uh, Isotelus anatomy here. The ventral anatomy going on here. With your permission, I'll take a picture. Oh, please do, yes. Especially since the sun is I'd here. leave that and take the... Uh... So, of course, this is what happens when I don't have my camera. Okay, I went back and got it. Found a really incredible isotelus. Isotelus gigantus, a very big trilobite in this beautiful place with the um, this beautiful creek. Found it awesome. Basically, one of the best in my lifetime trilobites. To me, the best finds are the ones that have detail on them, that you can be able to learn something, to see something. But that, it's, it's perfect. Underneath, you see so much detail that even a perfect one you wouldn't see. Yes. So I think that's good. So the weather has gotten beautiful again. No, it actually cleans off the fossils for us. So the weather is beautiful. Have the rest of that isotelus to pull out. Well, this is going to be a jovial video. Yes, it is. <laughs> you know, I th this is almost enough for this, this. I think this spot is going to be enough for an episode. Awesome. So here's where we're at now. The pagidium from that big isotelus is still in this rock. It's a huge rock. Going to start cutting far away from it and hopefully getting a piece to lift up underneath it at some point. So it took a lot of work, but I was able to crop down the pagidium from that isotelus gigantus and hopefully. Uh, this will clean up well. Looks like there's actually some more of the isotelus in this piece too. Doesn't look like much now, but it'll be cleaned up and I'll show it when it looks much better. So Mike and Ray, how have your days been? How's your day been? My day has been great. I think it went hanging around with my two best friends, Chris and Mike. Oh, I think awesome. it went uh, pretty well. I think everybody enjoyed themselves. Yes. And yes, and look at the beautiful sunshine. Now, some people didn't come because it was going to pour rain over. Yeah. Well, we did get our share of rain. It's really nice now. You missed me falling in the water just a few minutes ago. <laughs> I'm not going to reenact that. So just an absolutely beautiful day. Okay, so where did you find? Great. Oh, I found a uh, Isotelus yes, sitting right on top of the ground. Of course, I had to break it off, but Correct. other than that. A little twisted like me, but other than that. <laughs> and here we have Mike's Leverite. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's right. Oh, yeah, that, that's what I like. Let me get a push on it. Charge. 
so as you can see I got the Isotelus Gigantis home in pretty much one piece the tail end had come off uh, on the other slab that was underneath it so I can reattach that and that will make it oh roughly roughly a foot long so this kind of big guy this is a really nice find this giant um, Isotelus, Isotelus Gigantis. A little bit disarticulated, but it looks like pretty much all of it is there. Uh, some may know that they also have a mouthpiece that goes underneath them. It looks like that's what this dis detached piece is right over here. So it looks like pretty much the whole thing. Now that I have some protectant on the parts that look a little bit crumbly, they'll stay together and it'll be much safer to work on this. So I'll be able to cut this down to size without worrying about the vibration shaking the whole thing apart. It's not very fragile for us. So at this point, I've cleaned it up about as much as I can before without um, doing any damage. At this point, it's going to need a little bit of spray to protect the exposed parts before I go further. very lightly because there are a lot of areas of dirt I'm still going to want to take off but I don't want to damage any of the good ones hence the protection So here it is now, with a thin layer of protectant on it, so it will, I can safely work on it further without losing any of the shell that's exposed. So now we have both parts of this giant trilobite prepared. We have this cleaned off and protected, this is the top part where it goes into the rock. Now, I've been telling you that it is an Isotelus gigantis, which is the name that it may be, but uh, my friend Mike sent me something where it shows that, I believe it's the Museum of New York, they have an Isotelus maximus, which also looks very similar, and the maximus is also molting. Now, here we have this giant head over here, and another piece popped off the opposite way. This is a molt. This is when the creature was shedding its shell just like a lobster does or a crab. So this thing, about 13 inches large or so, was actually molting to get bigger. <laughs> so this uh, life went on for uh, this Isotelus maximus back around 420 million years ago. So the bottom half here, oh, sorry, top half here. I have the bottom half here with a nice pagidium and the matching half of the head. I'm going to mark off where to cut this using this T-square. I want to give it plenty of room so it doesn't cause the fossil to come apart, but I also want to try and use a size that I might be able to build a frame for. So I'm going to go just under 18 inches. I'm not going to do a full 18 inches long because um, just slightly less I will fit into a frame if I make it, if I do put it in a frame. Square it off. A little chalk to mark the cut. Line up the other side to make the cut even. Let's see, 18 by 14 is looks like it's going to be the dimension, so slightly under 18 by 14. And then I'll be doing the same with the other half when I'm ready to cut that. If there's a I'm going to move it over just slightly. I don't like where it is. Move it over about half an inch. Half an inch. Something else to note. It looks like this top layer is going to separate off. I want to try and cut this through before this separates so this way I can get it to break or cut the way that I want. 
as opposed to it splitting in directions I might not want. So, and who knows, maybe on the inside there's gonna be more great fossils so I won't cut too deep. So, I'm gonna use this, um, or try to prevent this from peeling up until after I make the cut. This piece came loose, that's, that's good. The more we can get away from the fossil, the better. So I'm gonna pull that off, maybe I can do the same with the others. I'm gonna try and get this stuff off. So I have just the fossil to protect over here. Can you see the trilobite? Uh, I believe so. I'm moving closer. And this is gonna die on me at any second. So quite a bit of work, but we got what we wanted. The giant trilobite. I'm gonna trim the edge right over here a little bit and then it's done. So just like before, I'm going to try to make this, the bottom half, about the same size as the top half. Um, Going with a little bit less than 18 inches in length and about 14 inches, whoops, gradual over there, about 14 inches in width. I'm just going to be taken off a little bit. Line it up so it's straight. There's a little bit of Material here. I don't want to come too close to that, so I'm just gonna really touch the, just the edge here. And this fragile end here, I might just flatten that a bit, but I'm not gonna do too much work. So the bottom half is gonna be about the same size as the I might actually go a little bit to this side of the chalk to give it slightly extra room. This piece is thinner, it should cut more easily.
So here we have the finished product. The Isotelus Gigantus or Isotelus Maximus, whichever it turns out to be. Cut out both halves with the top part of the head molting off. So this was a malt, the creature actually surviving beyond shedding the shell some 420 million years ago during the Ordovician period. Thank you for watching Fossil Hunting and Chris Up the Creek Part 2. I hope you watch the second half of this. If you do, please uh, let me know if you like it. You can comment, tell me if there are any things you like to see, or please give me a thumbs up. Or better yet, hit the subscribe button down there. That will, subscribing will just make more fossil type videos pop up in the YouTube feed. Thank you. Thank you to Mike and Ray and Mike and Max and Kat and Chris and Max who uh, all helped out with the, uh, and Andrew who all helped out with the filming of this uh, episode. See you in part two.